everyone welcome to jg chem master class guys in today's video we will discuss about two dimension nmr and here we will talk about gated or inverse decoupling where we will see het core which is heteronuclear coupling between proton and c30 and it can be classified as hmqc and hmbc we will see the full form of all this uh, in this particular video and uh, we will see the pu pulse sequence about all these techniques the topic i have prepared on demand so let's begin 2d nmr's pulse sequence which is fourier transform method so let's see this is the pulse sequence for two dimension nmr in general so you can see here this pulse sequence is divided into certain section which is first you can notice here preparation period and then followed by the 90 degree pulse sequence then you have evolution period again followed by 90 degree per sequence and then it is an acquisition period where the FID that is free induction decay is detected and you get the spectrum for the complex molecule. So here basically what happens here in the preparation period the magnetization which is changed from its equilibrium state in a specific manner or you can say it is getting prepared in the preparation period and then it is allowed to evolve as a function of time and then spins are allowed to affect each other behavior like it can be spin spin coupled or dipolar coupled through space like we found in uh, NOE finally the resulting magnetization you detect here in FIDs and several experiments are carried out the resulting FID detected depending on the time variable T1 and T2 this means that FID data can be Fourier transformed twice, one with respect to T2 and other with respect to T1. As a consequence, two frequencies, F1 and F2, you can see we will obtain here, where F2 will be on the x-axis and F1 will be on the y-axis. So here, this will give you one on the one on one axis, you will be having carbon 13 NMR and on other axis, you will be having proton NMR and you can find the correlation among the two. So this is in general to the NMR pulse sequence. Now we'll see and talk about the proton C13 COSY that is correlation spectroscopy, head core heteronuclear because the two nucleus are hetero, one is proton, other is carbon 13. So basically in head core, we will see one bond coupling, carbon 13 signal from each FID here will be singlet because we are talking about one bond coupling. So other couplings will be removed here in this particular technique. We'll see the pulse sequence for this. And you can notice here again, you have two channels, one for the proton, other for C13. Again, you have evolution period. You have here acquisition period and where the decoupler is on in the acquisition period to remove the other coupling, the remote coupling. And you get only the one bond coupling in the acquisition period and you can notice one more thing here here c13 the acquisition is taking place the fid is recording from the c13 which is an insensitive nucleus so in this case the sensitivity of uh, the spectrum will be less here so basically what happened the broadband decoupling is applied here through this acquisition channel and uh, in which we are recording only the fid related to the singlet carbons and correlation occurs here again with respect to T1 and T2 and proton decoupler is not turned on here in the evolution period. In the T1 period since the correlation occur, so here the decoupler is off while the decoupler is on in the acquisition period. Okay, so this is head core. Here F1 axis with respect to proton T1 and F2 axis with respect to T2 carbon axis. Now here you can notice few statements that two different pulse sequence here could be obtained between the sensitive nucleus that is proton and C13 that is insensitive nucleus. The more recent technique that is called HMQC heteronuclear multiple quantum coherence and HMBC heteronuclear multiple bond connectivity this is the full form involves inverse polarization transfer okay so inverse polarization transfer means the tra here the magnetization is transformed 
from the sensitive nucleus which is proton to the C13 which is insensitive. So inverse from the sensitive to the insensitive inverse polarization comes. Right? So this is called inverse uh, coupling. Also you have gated decoupling here. So this is also called gated decoupling. Okay, decoupler we are using. So gated decoupling. Both the techniques comes under the same terms. So you can see the definition which is I just now told you. Now so we will see here first HMQC. So this is the pulse sequence for HMQC. You can see here again. Uh, you can notice preparation period, evolution period. Here decoupler is on in the evolution period. And you have acquisition period. The data is uh, you are recording from the H1 channel which is a sensitive nucleus, right? So what will happen here? Magnetization will develop during the evolution period. And finally, it will transform into the proton channel. The sensitive proton nucleus is used to detect the signals here. And the result is clear 2D spectrum with the high resolution. You will get here 8 fold increase sensitivity in case of HMQC because here the spectrum is recorded from the sensitive nucleus HMQC. Here F1 axis with respect to T1 belongs to carbon axis which is just opposite to head curve which we have seen. F2 with respect to T2 which belongs to proton axis. You can see here high resolution we have already talked about it. Now HMBC, this is the pulse sequence for HMBC. Here again you have preparation period. You can notice here we have one pulse in C13 and we have 290 degree pulse in the proton channel. Here the acquisition is taking place from the C13 channel which is an insensitive uh, nucleus. So HMBC we can consider the inverse polarization technique here and decoupler is on here. Okay, before the evolution period. So basically HMPC is a technique where uh, it uh, remove all the one bond coupling. So before we get here 90 degree pulse in the proton channel, the coupling between the proton and carbon which is directly attached will be removed here. And in the evolution period, uh, the between the 290 degree pulse, what will happen? The relation between the remote carbon hydrogen coupling which is two bond or three bond or sometimes four bond coupling will be evolved here and then after 90 degree second 90 degree pulse in the proton channel it will be acquired and send this information to the c13 channel it will be acquired in the c13 channel and fid is recorded each time so basically here the first 90 degree pulse in the c13 nmr will eliminate the one bond JCH coupling and hence the cross peak due to the one bond coupling will be removed here does not exist only the long range coupling between the proton and carbon will exist and the other 90 degree pulse in the carbon 13 okay so other 90 degree pulse that, that uh, the re proton resonance resonance from proton as I told you, between carbon and 13, which belongs to the long range coupling, will be recorded here. Okay, so basically, HMBC is for the long range coupling. Okay, and HMQC is single bond coupling. So, this is the difference, and uh, I hope uh, that uh, you can notice all this information related to this, right? You can see. It is basically useful to locate the quaternary carbon through the 2CH coupling, right? 2 bond coupling, 3 bond coupling, J for the coupling constant and some, sometimes 4CH bond coupling. So like this, uh, we have seen the inverse and gated coupling. The information about HMQC, HMBC, which is from the part of uh, head core. And uh, if you get the question related to DNMR or all this technique or gated or inverse polarization or techniques, you can define all the uh, above information which I have mentioned to you and hope you learned about it. You got some information from this video. All the best. See you in the next video.